I've told a few commentary stories, and some of you may have heard something about this before. I realize these stories just keep going back and back and back and back. I'm gonna go even further back in time to 2016. Back at a little event you might be familiar with called Evo. So Evo 2016 was actually my first time ever doing Evo commentary. In Evo 2015, I was scheduled for one block. On the first day of Evo, I was scheduled to open up the stream for Mortal Kombat X if and only if both of the NRS employees build on their commentary. The second block I had was Mortal Kombat Semi, so the top 16 to top 8 block, and I was in the match. Like, I had to play in Semi, so I couldn't do commentary for that block. So I did no commentary for EVO 2015. EVO 2016, I am scheduled for so much commentary. I have 10 hours of commentary Friday, 10 hours of commentary on Saturday, and then EVO finals for Street Fighter V on Sunday. I am just working my ass off. My voice is dead. I'm exploding. I'm so fucking tired. I have so much commentary. I commentate from like 8 a.m. to close both days of Evo, Friday and Saturday. We make it to Sunday. Now, if you don't know, this is the first year it's at Mandalay Bay. It's the first year it's like in the big arena, either the first or second year that it's happened, right? So it's like a big deal. So ESPN is happening and they're doing Street Fighter on ESPN. And then I am doing the Twitch broadcast, which to be honest, I much prefer. This is it. This is my first time doing Evo commentary. I'm doing Evo top eight. I'm pumped. I'm ready to go, right? And I gotta say, it's like Fort fucking Knox trying to get into Mandalay Bay. We have to like get our fucking fancy esports bracelets. Like you have to have someone get you past the guards, like a fucking hitman level, get you through the elevator, Passed all the way up to the top floor into the suites at the top of Mandalay Bay. Not only that, but you can't like bring in anything to Mandalay Bay. Like, you know, they don't allow you to bring any snacks, food, drinks, anything like that. So we make it up to the top and whoever like escorted us in disappeared into the shadows. And it's like myself and like a group of five people. We don't know where the fuck to go. We're just at the top of Mandalay Bay. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. There's just like a ring of suites around the top of Mandalay Bay. So we're just like, fuck it. We might as well start walking. And we pick a direction. We just go right. And it's just like boxes. You know, all these different companies have reserved suites to watch Evo that year. And it's like very fancy. And we got some time before Street Fighter starts. And we don't know where we're going really or what's happening or whatever. And we enter like a big wide chamber finally instead of just like this hall. And in it, there's catering, and there's, like, lots of people in fancy suits, and everybody's, like, chit-chatting and networking, and I'm like, oh, shit, let's go. I'm starving. There's, like, a lady on the side who's like, sir, would you like some coffee? And they got, like, coffee and, like, all kinds of syrups and fancy stuff and an espresso machine. And as we're sitting there enjoying our mini corn dogs and coffee and all this stuff, and I haven't eaten yet, I'm st it's, like, you know, in the afternoon, I'm really hungry. We notice a shift happened. Everybody's kind of looking at us. <laughs> we're kind of standing out as like the only people not in suits and we're really enjoying the free food. Like no one else really is paying that much attention. We're cleaning out the free food. And somebody who is like, you know, clearly the security walks up and someone points over at us and they walk up and they're like, uh, excuse me, are you with Riot Games? Before we can even answer, we're just like, Riot Games? We're like, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. I'm like mid corn dog in my mouth. I'm like, uh, all right, and I take my coffee and like we skedaddle. And as we're skedaddling, we realize like there was no food left. As we left, there was like a sign that says like Riot Games booth, and everybody in there is like staring at us. And I just cleaned out all these mini corn dogs. I'm like, <laughs> so I just like move on. I keep moving, right? I just assumed the catering was free, to be honest. I assumed it was the transition room between like the little booths and then there's like a big room and then there's more little booths and then a big room and then more little booths. So we walk into the hall and there's more little booths. And again, it's like Twitch and all these random esports companies like Facebook, all these people. And then we open into a big room again. And this time it's the production room. So we finally made it to where I am supposed to be. And what we realized is, remember when I said we left the elevator and we made a right? Well, if we just went left, it was like right there. We went on this extravagant jaunt to the right, but we did get the catering, which is fucking sick. So we get into there and everybody is stressed the fuck out. Everybody in this room looks pissed because this is the first year they're doing ESPN at Evo, right? So they got to coordinate, right? Between everything on the Evo broadcast on ESPN, they got to coordinate for TV. They got to do everything like it's a big deal. And the top eight before us finishes, it was Melee, it was Scar and Tove doing commentary. I say what up to them, they're like, good luck. So we sit down, 
and we're ready we're doing our official thing and seg and, and everybody's talking to us and they're like hey look this might be a bumpy ride okay tv is going and you guys are following tv and when they go to breaks and stuff you guys got to fill and when game plays on you just do your normal thing but we're we're following tv so it's gonna be a little hectic so we sit down and we start doing our top eight and we're commentating our top eight and it's you know it's going great it's on the big stage everybody is hype li joe is in top eight that year so everybody's hype about that we make it the winners finals of the tournament it's been a bit of a hectic show but we're hanging in there. spencer if you guys don't know spencer he's in the chat all the time spenny he's our director he gets into our ear and says hey we're going to you guys now like this match is happening now right and then he tells us about it and winners finals of the tournament starts and as we're watching the match right and we're getting into it and it's getting hype I can hear like white noise from Spencer's mic, which is fine. I realize his mic is still on, but we're just cruising. We're talking about the match. We're hype. And I hear people talking in the background and I hear Seg yelling in the background, Spencer. He just yells, Spencer, where the fuck is the video? He's like yelling at him. He's like, Spencer, where's the video? And then I hear Spencer yelling back. I don't have the video. I don't know where the video is. And Seg's like, where's the video, Spencer? We got to play the video after this one. Spencer, where's the video? And Spencer's like, I don't know where the video is, Spencer. I don't know, Seg. I can't find the video. And I'm like, gets the brimstone. Going to carry to the corner here. Going to be the Oki here. Yep. Crouching light kick forward. Heavy punch medium. Gets hit by the crush. Left, right mix. And oh, that's going to be the round. Like me and James cannot hear each other over what's happening. in our. It's a cacophony in our earphones of just them screaming, like, TV's gonna go, ESPN's going now, where is she? And he's just like, I don't have Rachel. And we're like, fucking, like, oh my God, we cannot hear. So we both pull our headphones off, like, to the side, right? So we can hear each other through our actual commentary, right? Because I, we can't hear through the headphones. This is just what Winner's Finals of the Tournament is. It's just Spencer being like, I don't have the video. And Segley is in the back, are like, Spencer. And he's wearing two... Imagine Segley is standing there with two pairs of headphones. One is like the TV feed, the other's like the main feed, and like he's listening to Spencer and he's like pulling headphones on and off. And James and I are like, dude, what are we gonna do? Like, this is a nightmare. Like, we can't hear each other. There's so much screaming. So next to us comes a figure that can save the day. One of the cannons walks up and has arms crossed, is just watching Evo. And we're like, oh my God, yes. Finally, someone who's not on production, somebody that can tell Spencer to turn off his mic so we don't hear him yelling at us anymore, right? Because he accidentally left it on. So James and I, we look like we're stranded on a desert island. We're wearing our, he our commentary headphones, one ear off, one ear on. And we're just like, hey, help. We're just like waving our arm. We're just like, gets the hit into the brimstone. Like, wave, we're trying our best to get attention. We look like Team America World Police when he's in the back of the jeans and he's just doing this to try to get assistance, you know? Finally, the cannon who's standing there, who's just staring out into the, the thing, turns towards us. And this is exactly what happens. He goes like this. And I can just see dead in his eyes. There's no life force left. He looks at us, and we're just, we're like... And he goes and stares out into the abyss of Evo. No blink, just back out into the abyss. It's just a husk of a man. And I was like, okay. I understood the look immediately. I was like, there's no soul left. Like, even if he wanted to help, there was no help to be offered. Like, that was the state of everybody at Evo. Spencer is dying, Segley is dying. The cannons, they have no life force left. It's been sapped from them by a gem. Probably some evil villain is stolen. Like, there was nobody there. Who saves the day? No one. Spencer just eventually figured out his mic was on. I think it's because he went to talk to us, and he muted himself, and then realized, oh shit, I was live the whole time, and then turned his mic back on, and was just like, uh, going to a break, and then turned his mic back off. <laughs> and, like, we make it through... And I just remember at the end of the day, just thinking like, oh my God, tournaments are fucking hard. Spencer confirmed in the chat, Spen Spencer says, I don't remember. I just remember that I didn't have the fucking video. That I can confirm. Yes, you did not have the video. Do you know what the video was, Spencer? Was there a reveal that year? Or honestly, it could have just been some random video for ESPN or the stream. It could have been literally anything. But that's, that's what tournaments are like sometimes. The best part is we finish up, right? We, we wrap up and I'm like, Spencer, you were really looking for a video, huh? And he's like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, he's just, you know, he is just not in it anymore. Seg walks up to me at some point when Evo's over. Just like, nice job on top eight. Hey, I got a complaint 
uh, from Riot that some of our commentators went over and stole all of their catering. Do you happen to know about that? And I was like, yes, I do. Yeah, I did. And it was delicious. <laughs> it was delicious, Seg. I had their catering and it was fantastic. I didn't see a sign on the door. There was a sign on the door, but I didn't see it. The best part is like, they told me they're like, yeah, it turns out there's a limited amount of catering. And like, you guys went to town and I was like, I thought it was all, Rye can't afford, I think my response legitimately was Rye can't afford all you can eat catering. Like, psh, psh. you know how many skins they sell? <laughs> Imagine me, Spencer looking for the video and I just have no food in me. Like I really needed, I really needed those many corn dogs. Flame Steve, he wasn't even there. Although, you know, the funny part is, I think I did tell other people, hey, if you want catering, you know, do a spot. I got a spot if you're a little hungry. I know a guy. I know a place. I know a lot of things. Oh, I forgot at the very end of the story chat. You know, we're in the suites at the top, right? Ultra David was in a row, posted up in his own seat. And I walked up and it was like right when like Melee had ended and like Street Fighter was starting up. And I remember Ultra David was wearing a triple XL Evo jersey, like, you know, just mad big. And he just posted up there and I was like, hey, what up, man? How's it going? And he's like, I finished Mortal Kombat commentary at 10 a.m. And I've been here drinking ever since. He's like, I was going to make it through all of the top eights, but uh, I think I'm going to go lay down. And he pats me on the shoulder and just walks away. <laughs> Listen. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Sage, and I'm back at it again with another commentary story. You know, like and subscribe. Make sure you let them all know if you enjoyed it. Drop a big comment in the channel down below. It really helps me out. I appreciate it. All right, boss man, let's get into it. You want to commit crimes? Boy, do I have the VPN for you. Like and subscribe.